Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can be part of the Shannon's Club, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm and Duncan Foster Engineering. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another exclusive Classic Restos, but this time we are in the region of San Francisco. This week's episode, well, it's not bikes, it's not cars, it's not trucks, well, close perhaps, but I'll show you more right after this. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. Welcome back. How about the humble bus? We all remember them as kids. And some of us still take a bus, but we always put it back when we're finished with it, right? Once upon a time, buses were built with class, particularly the higher end models. Classic buses, well, in my opinion, they're like classic cars. Some had shape, most had some shiny bright work, they sounded great, they just stood out. And now it's time for me to show you some. Welcome to the Pacific Bus Museum here in Fremont, California. What about a classic bus? How cool are they? Makes you wonder these taken for granted modes of transport were responsible for taking countless millions of people from A to B over many years. Like interstate truckers, these road warriors battled all conditions. Freezing cold, searing heat, running 24-7. And if asphalt was the enemy, these weapons ate them up mile after mile, decade after decade. The Pacific Bus Museum is an organisation of bus enthusiasts, mostly retired guys, based in Northern California dedicated to honouring the history of this unique form of transportation. The incredible bus collection comprises over 20 coaches, both city transport and intercity types, encompassing eras from the 1930s up to modern times, and is focused on, but not limited to, California and the Western United States. The Pacific Bus Museum is also a rolling museum, they welcome invitations to events in Northern California where the buses can be displayed. Their mission here at Pacific Bus is to preserve, restore and operate the historic buses and to showcase the acquisition and collection of bus artefacts and memorabilia for the education, appreciation and enjoyment to the public. The Pacific Buses Museum's aim is to preserve yesterday for tomorrow. Even a classic bus is now in the spotlight. How cool is that? Well, I think classic buses are amazing. They also hold the key for unlocking some incredible history. And to tell us more, here's Ron. Good morning, Fledge. Welcome to the Pacific Bus Museum. We're glad you came today to see our buses. Hey, it's my pleasure, Ron. My pleasure. There's something about classic buses. I agree. We have, uh, I have a a fondness for them and I'm hoping that uh, there's other people that appreciate these wonderful vehicles the way I do. Ron, I think that's very important. These buses are being preserved, they're out of the weather, they're inside. It's great that you've got this depot here and I mean with the price of real estate around the San Francisco area, I mean, goodness me, I, mean, I think you've done well. Yes, we're, we're, we've been quite fortunate to have this facility here uh, where we can keep uh, 10 buses undercover and also do some uh, minor repairs and maintenance to them. Uh, in fact, that's what some of the other 
uh, volunteers are doing here today. Well, speaking of which, the bus behind us, got to love this, 1945. Can you believe that a product can look so good, really? I mean, we're talking a bus. Uh, it's, a, it's a special appreciation now in 2016. Before we go any further, what engine has this got? Because when it pulled up, it sounds, it sounds unbelievable. Okay, General Motors made a, a family of engines in various um, displacements. Uh, this one has a four-cylinder General Motors diesel. Uh, larger buses. Four cylinder. Four cylinder. That would have to be probably the most awesome four cylinder engine I think I've ever heard. Yeah, the, the engine family uh, is known as the 71 series, uh, indicating 71 cubic inches per cylinder. Tell us about the history of this particular bus. Where did it do service, Ron? Okay, this bus actually uh, was delivered new to uh, Missouri Pacific uh, Trailways, and they operated out of St. Louis, Missouri. How long was this bus in service for? Uh, probably, I would say, from 1945 when it was built to probably the early 60s. Mm. So how did you guys find it? Where was it? Well, actually, this bus belonged to a private bus collector who was also our first president, and he had a private collection of buses, uh, and he donated six of them to the museum here in 1997, and this is one of them. Okay, this is a fancy looking bus. What have we got going on here, Ron? Well, Flash, this is one of our flagships. This is a 1955 General Motors transit bus. Dude, General Motors, they played a big part, didn't they? Yes, they did. At one point, they had over 95% of the bus market in the United States, not only for city type or transit buses, but inner city or like Greyhound long distance buses as well. But they've, all, they've built a fantastic engine, didn't they? They built a fantastic engine, they built a fantastic bus, uh, which I will be glad to describe to you their advantage, and they, they pretty much dominated the market. Okay, so General Motors just didn't do the rolling chassis and the engine, did they build the body as well? Yes, they did. Right. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Now, tell us the story on this old girl behind us. Okay, this is... Um, a 1955 General Motors Transit bus, and it uh, is painted in its original livery of uh, Peerless Stages. Peerless Stages was one of the oldest company operating companies in the United States. They date back, dated back to 1917, and they ceased business in 2003. Not a lot of changes, for example, between the last bus of 1945 to 55. Subtle changes. Well, actually, there were quite a few changes as we will see in some of our other buses. But uh, particularly after World War II, uh, there was a big effort on uh, by General Motors uh, to enlarge and make uh, more efficient inner city type buses as well as, as city type buses. And um, we will see an example of that, uh, like this bus for, for city, city bus uh, uh, use, as well as uh, you know, long distance travel as well. It's quite a bit of change. All right, so we've got a six cylinder engine here? Yes. Wow. And uh, what is unique about this bus is most city buses had uh, hydromatic or simply automatic transmissions. There were two speed transmissions, and this bus has a uh, uh, four-speed mechanical transmission, kind of a, a rarity for a city bus. Okay, so people back in the day, 1955, fairly comfortable were they? I mean, if they were they were in this bus, they they would have felt quite okay. Yes, yes. The some of the advancements that took place after World War II, probably the biggest, was the development of air ride. Mm. Uh, we eliminated the leaf springs, yes. produce a much smoother ride, and this was accomplished by uh, the rolling lobe bellows, or balloons, whatever you want to call them, there were two on each, there were actually four on the front axle and four on the on the rear axle, two on each side. I mean General Motors was always big on that with their suspension, obviously following through later on with their passenger cars as well with four coil springs instead of the leaf springs. Yeah, the um, uh, in 1958 General Motors did uh, offer as an option on uh, Buick automobiles uh, the air suspension ride. <music>
break, we'll be back with Ron showing more classic buses. And later on in today's show, the Big Daddy awaits us. Back with more after this. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penriteoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Welcome back. Hey Ronnie, you having fun? I'm having a lot of fun, Fletch. Yeah, it's not every day a TV show turns up into your museum. That's, that's true, and we're happy to have you folks here, and we're happy to tell you all about our buses. Well, I love these buses. They excite me. They really do, because we go back in time. It's like our classic cars, our trucks, our bikes, and these buses were just so well made. Here we have a 1955 a Vizzy Coach. Now, this is stuff that I'm learning while I'm here today as well. Ron, tell us a story about this bus behind us. Okay, this is a 1955 flexible Visicoach. These are smaller versions of, uh, of an inner city bus that uh, maybe General Motors or, or another company would build. And uh, this seats 29 passengers. These uh, were uh, used extensively in various parts of the country for smaller rural routes where larger passenger capacity was not needed. Right. Uh, the larger buses soon replaced these on routes all over the country uh, but these buses continued to operate uh, such as this one behind me here in uh, many of our national parks okay now in australia now if you're watching the show and you're into your buses you'll probably i'll stand corrected here we had the clipper and I think 1949 was the year that the Clipper started running Central Australia. Now, what's the difference between the Clipper and this particular bus here? Because they look identical. Okay, well, this is the model that followed the Clipper. Okay, uh, a lot of times I'll refer to these, generally these type of buses, as Clippers. Uh, indicated by the bullet-shaped back of the coach and the air scoop on the roof for the air intake. But what officially distinguishes them are these windows on the side. The, the Clippers had seven square windows like the third window you see here in 1949 and 50. They replaced the seven square windows along the side with three elongated side windows to give it a more modern, updated appearance and provide more visibility. What power is these? What, what engine has this got? Well, this one has a gasoline engine. It's a, a Fagile six-cylinder uh, engine. It's an overhead valve and uh, it's made it to a five-speed transmission. Now, we look into the interior. I've got to say, Ron, this is beautiful. I mean, again, we step back into 1955 here. We've got these recliner seats with brushed aluminium sides, uh, swage lines in the aluminium. It's class all day long. Now, these seats are pretty comfortable. Can you tell us why they are so comfortable? Well, actually, one of the reasons was that they were... Uh, the seats were actually built by the bus manufacturer, Flexible. In my opinion, uh, sitting in these seats is just a wonderful experience. They're very, very relaxing. When I'm filming classic restos, I work extremely hard. Look at this next scene to justify what I'm saying. In terms of history with this particular bus, what's the story there? This bus 
was in service and uh, spent his pretty much his entire working life in the national parks in the United States. Originally in 1955, this bus ran in, in U, for the Utah Parks Company, who was the concessionaire for the national parks in the state of Utah. So it had an easy life. It certainly did. And then in 1973, it was sold to uh, Glacier National Park Transportation Company. Is it an easy bus to drive? Yes, it is. This one is, is uh, handles quite well, it, it, a spring ride. Uh, as opposed to the slightly larger General Motors buses that had air ride. And for a spring ride bus, this bus rides remarkably well. Moving through as we do here at this incredible bus museum, thanks to this guy here and a fantastic crew working behind the scenes. They do a good job, Ron, don't they? Yes, they do. We're all volunteers. We all do our darndest yeah. to get these buses looking as good as they are. Now, we've got two guys. We've got two two deaf guys over there that work here. They, they signal each other. The sign language between the two of them is fantastic, and they do a great day's work. One's an electrician too, right? Yes. Yeah, the other has... Uh, a lot of mechanical uh, uh, experience, and he's uh, probably one of our, or the hardest worker that we have, and his knowledge <coughs> has helped us restore these buses to what they are today. Well, I think that's wonderful that you're giving these two guys the opportunity here to work. I think that's nice, Ron. Now, behind us, we've got a big daddy. We start to move up into a big bus now. We're talking 1985, right? Yes. And tell us the history of this bus as quickly as you can in terms of the area of the United States that it worked in. Okay, Fletch, this is a Motor Coach Industries MC9. MCI was the company name. They had a subsidiary called uh, Transportation Manufacturing Company, TMC. And uh, they also built buses, uh, these same buses, uh, when the initial plant that they had in Winnipeg, Canada, and the finishing off plant in Pemberton, North Dakota, couldn't handle all the work or the orders they had, so they erected another uh, manufacturing plant in Roswell, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So this bus was manufactured in Roswell, New Mexico right. in early 1985. Well, wow, it's in great condition. Uh, how many, just uh, for, uh, for the sake of it, how many miles was on this bus? Well, we have the odometer there on this is 200, about 210,000 miles, right. which is actually pretty low considering a bus for this age. It's very low. Again, it's, uh, it's had an easy life, and, well, that reflects the, the preservation standard of what you've got here. Now, power out back, what are we looking at there with the engine? Okay, the engine is a Detroit diesel or GM diesel 6V92 turbocharged engine. You guys, you have your, you have your buses sounding like your classic cars. Yes, well, we uh, we keep tabs on them and we make sure that they're they're running properly and we try as best we can to take care of all the uh, the problems, particularly oil leaks, yeah. which is uh, probably these engines are all known for that, for their leaky oil leaks. But we try to keep keep up with them and keep on top of them so that we can we can keep them running. We look at the size of this bus and we look at the brushed aluminium sides, I mean the American look of these coaches. I mean when they're in Australia, I'm sure you'll agree when you see one, it just takes on that United States look, it reminds you of over here. I mean this is where they're designed, this is where they came from. Mm -hmm. Yes, these uh, MCIs were actually at one time owned by uh, the Greyhound Corporation and they built uh, initially started building all of Greyhound's buses and then they began selling these buses to other companies. Yep. And it uh, just so happens that the MCI M model MC9 was the pro most prolific model of bus ever built. Mm -hmm. There were over 7,000 of this model built, the most ever. Now this might be one big daddy of a bus, but stay where you are because after the break we're going to be back to showcase one of the most famous buses ever designed and built. And in the meantime, I think you should reward yourself with a Fletch tour. Have a look at this. There is nothing 
quite like a Fletch Tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Book a Fletch Tour, it's amazing. We've seen some absolutely amazing cars. What an event. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit Tour. I would make it a point to go to Fletch Tours and come to Detroit? There are five Fletch Tours. Select the one that suits you best. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. Welcome back. Just imagine if you're in 1955. You have to go from one side of the country to the other. You turn up at the Greyhound Depot one night and this bus here rolls in. Talk about wow, wow and more wow. This is just a famous shape it's an incredible bus, and you've got it here in your collection. How does that make you feel, Ron? Well, it makes me feel very proud, Fletch. I'll tell you, we've uh, searched long and hard for uh, one of these. It was still uh, a seated coach, and uh, with the intent of adding it to our collection and restoring it, and we did. You're still restoring it. You haven't finished. Now, no, haven't. funds are holding you up? We are seeking more funding to complete uh, the work remaining on this bus, yeah. which is mostly getting the interior finished. Okay. We've got a website down the bottom of the screen right now. If you're watching, hey, if you want to send something along and help these guys out to get a piece of automotive or transportation history restored, um, the bus runs. Uh, we've been for a drive in it. It sounds sensational. Tell us about the engine. Okay, the engine is a uh, GM or Detroit diesel 8V71 engine. We've had a lot of those today, haven't we? Oh, yes, we have. <laughs> yeah, just about everything here has a, a GM diesel in it. There's a lot to be said for GM. or other. Yeah. Uh, this bus here is really the quintessential Greyhound. When they were first uh, put on the road between 1954 and 1956, on up to the early 70s when they uh, started selling them off. Well, 1955 blows me away because to me it, it looks, it, it has got that space age appeal about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about state of the art. This must have been moving along down the road back in those times. Mm -hmm. uh, people would have stopped. They would have fallen out of their cars looking at this thing. Well, they, they did. Uh, what happened, Greyhound took delivery of 1,001 of these buses between 1954 and 1956. They were built exclusively for Greyhound. They had two four-cylinder GM diesel engines in them with a five-speed transmission and they were linked, both engines were linked by fluid coupling. Doesn't sound good. No, needless to say it didn't work out well. Uh, what saved these buses was General Motors developed the V8 engine. In 62, they took 983 of them yeah. and rebuilt them yeah. with a, a V8 engine in them. And they updated the, the appearance of the bus uh, to reflect Greyhound's 50th anniversary, which would have been in 1964. Now, Ron, what's it like to drive as a bus? 
it's actually a little different than the modern coaches that are 40 feet long, as this is. Uh, so, okay, 40 feet long. Yeah. Today's biggest coaches, how long are they? They're 45 feet. Okay, okay. so five feet longer on the modern day stuff. Right. And uh, this bus, again, back in, in the uh, 1950s was state of the art. The only bus on the road uh, of this length, and Greyhound had to seek special permits from each of the states in the United States to actually run this bus. Mark from Shannon's, who's travelling on this trip as well, is absolutely blown away by this bus. It's one of his personal favourites as well. He actually told me some interesting stuff about Raymond Lowy, mm -hmm. designer from Studebaker, actually designed this bus he too. That's a, amazing. Yeah, he was a famous industrial designer. He uh, designed Studebaker automobiles. He designed a lot of streamlined uh, steam engines uh, for the... Uh, railroads back in the late 30s and early 40s mm. and this is really the second uh, bus that he helped design for Greyhound. Well Ron, I, all I can say on behalf of myself and uh, the people that watch Classic Restos all around the world, we wish you the very best uh, with your team here to finish this bus. It's nearly done. I mean, as you alluded to earlier, it's just uh, interior uh, trim pieces that need to be finished on this this beautiful bus. Mm -hmm. So I wish you all the very best for that. And your time here today and showing us uh, just some of the buses here, uh, yeah, my hat comes off to you. What a great job you do. Fletch, my pleasure having you and Mark here today. We're happy to do it, especially... Um, showing this bus here, which yeah. is, like yeah. I say, the quintessential Greyhound. And, yeah. and about all the buses that we have in our collection, we have 24. Yep. This one elicits the most response from the members and the public. Well, they're all great here, but on today's show, we just had to leave the best to last. So Absolutely. thanks again, Ron. Okay, Fletch, my pleasure. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Well, how good was that? A dedicated team of guys preserving these historic buses. If you visit San Francisco, look up the Pacific Bus Museum. They'd love to see you. And as I say at the end of every episode, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can be part of the Shannons Club, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, and Duncan Foster Engineering.